Welcome to the Prolific Author Podcast. Let's face it, readers read fiction to feel emotion and be transported and transformed. In this ongoing digital revolution, where online marketing is always in flux, the only way to create a sustainable author business and live off your royalties is to write transformational stories, market at every stage of the author journey, and cultivate a loyal audience of readers. Fortunately, there's never been more opportunity to make a living as a fiction author. Hi, I'm Liesl Hill, USA Today bestselling author and story clarity coach. When I'm not dictating my own stories about dragons, serial killers, and dystopian worlds, I help other authors write their own transformational fiction, position them as bestsellers, and market them like pros. Join me on the podcast where I give writing tips, marketing how-tos, story advice, and interviews with other authors who are in the trenches just like you and making it work. We are prolific authors. Hi there, and welcome back to the Prolific Author Podcast. First off the bat, I want to say that if my voice cracks a little bit or sounds a little bit nasally, that's because I ended up having like a five-day cold in the last week. Um, I'm actually feeling much better. I'm doing fine. But I still have a little bit of a nose and throat thing going on, you know, kind of lingers, a little bit annoying. And, you know, wouldn't you know it that, I, of course, I get a cold like that during nano just to make things more interesting, keep me on my toes, right? So just uh, bear with me if my voice is a little bit weird today. Um, in terms of the nano update, I'm actually doing pretty well. Uh, a lot of the people in my Facebook group have outstripped me in, in terms of the words they're writing. I am at about 45,000 words today, which is great. I'm definitely going to hit the 50,000, and I'm really hoping actually to get to 70,000 so that I can kind of finish the first draft of the novel that I'm on. That's that's my goal. But there are people in the group that have already gone way over 50,000. They're way ahead of me. So, you know, more power to them. Go cheer them on. And I hope that anybody who's doing nano, that it's going well for you and that you're making lots of progress on your book. And remember that even if you don't hit 50,000 words or don't hit your goals, any progress you made is still, you know, progress that wasn't in place before you started. So give yourself a break and some grace and just, you know, get as much done as you possibly can. All right, so I have a really fun interview for us today, which I will get to in a minute. But first, let's talk about Mindset Minute. Over the next few months with the holidays of Hannes, we are all going to feel very stressed out. And stress is probably the single biggest thing that keeps us from getting work done. In fact, I can pretty much guarantee that the stress of Nano and, you know, just being November and the holidays and everything else around us, you know, all the crazy political climate, you know, we all know the world's kind of a crazy place right now. All of that is probably the reason I got sick, okay? Stress always takes a toll on your immune system. So, I mean, really, that's probably the reason that I got sick. And I didn't even feel particularly stressed, but I was just thinking about all the things I have to get done, and I, you know, accidentally made myself sick. It happens. So... I'm not telling you not to feel stress because I don't think that's possible (laughs) during the next two months of the year. We're all going to feel it. That's just the way the holidays are. But try not to let it stress you out. And and I'm going to give you a couple of different techniques for doing that. The first one is breathing. There's pretty much nothing that cannot be solved by breathing through it, at least in terms of your mindset, okay? So the next time you get all stressed out and start to freak out about everything you have to get done, you know, when your your shoulders start to just get tense and, and scrunched together, I want you to stop and I want you to breathe. Take six slow breaths. And I want you to think to yourself, I am breathing in calmness (laughs) and hopefully productivity, and I'm breathing out stress, okay? And if you just do that very slowly six times, I promise you, you will always feel better. You will relax, get rid of the stress, and then you can move forward, okay? When you get all tense, it kind of paralyzes you, especially in terms of writing and productivity. So don't let yourself get that way. Now, during the next two months, you might find yourself doing that several times a day, (laughs) just depending on how stressful your life is. But that's okay. If you got to do that, do it. And I promise you'll get through it much, much more easily. Um, The other thing that I want you to do is change your mindset about how you talk about your writing. Instead of saying, I have to get something done, I have to get my words in for nano today, I have to get my writing done, I have to get my storyboarding done, or you know, whatever it is. And this can be also for non-writing things, you know, to do with the holidays, to do with you know anything, anything in your life that you're on on your to-do list trying to get done, right? Instead of saying that you have to get it done or you need to get it done, change to I get to get it done. That way you're having a more positive outlook about it and it starts to seem a little bit more like fun. So say to yourself instead of I have to get my words done for Nano, say I get to write this scene today. I get to write about these characters today. I get to maybe finish my first draft of my book today. That I, I'm sure I don't have to explain why that will change the way you look at it and how easy it is to get it done. Okay, so those are my two tips for Mindset Minute. Breathe when you got to breathe, even if it's several times a day, and change I have to or I need to to I get to. And that will definitely help you in your mindset when it comes to getting your writing done and everything else you got to get done during this holiday season. (laughs) 
Okay, so today's interview is um, relatively short, but very fun. It's with Michael Ross, who started out as an actor, and he's got a lot of really interesting things to say because he's now also an author. He writes in multiple genres, he does all kinds of projects, and we, we just talk about some really fun things, including how his method acting has helped him develop characters, and I think that's super important, okay? So without further ado, I'm just going to get into the interview, but I'll be back afterward to um, just have a few thoughts about it. All right, we are here today with Michael Ross. How are you doing, Michael? I'm very well, thank you, and how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, we're kind of in the heavy winter months, aren't we? <laughs> oh dear, yeah. I mean, it's cold over here too, but uh, not quite the same extent as it is in parts of the states. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, spring's just around the corner. We'll we'll get there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. Why don't you start by telling everybody um, who you are and what you do and what you write? Well, um, I'm based in the UK. Uh, my life really has been that of an actor. I've been. 17 years in theatre, then I went into TV, so I've done most of the soaps, uh, British soaps anyway. Then I got into feature films. Uh, in fact, the last one I did was the first Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr., um, which was actually filmed in a large city close to me in the north of England called Manchester. Hmm. So, um, yeah, I also started developing a very popular fitness programme called Ket Fusion. And uh, that went on really well until I discovered I had to have two brand new hips. And I thought, oh, that's the end of it. But I've got these new hips uh, and they are fantastic. Uh, but I went to see a clairvoyant. Now, whether you believe in them or not, I went to see this clairvoyant. And she said to me, um, whatever happens, you've got to write. I said, well, I can write. She says, no, no, you've got to write something. Uh, you've got to write a book or in a magazine. And... I took no notice of it for about a year. Then I wrote a true life story, which I, I had written. And then since then, I'm like 18 books into it. And I've got three more. Uh, we've had some awards with some of the books. And I, I'm, I'm multi-genre. I mean, I write everything from all ages of children to scary horror ones to epic fantasies. You name it. So, um, yeah, I've been constantly writing ever since. And uh, I love it. Great. So, so when was that? When did you start writing? How long has it been? Oh, probably about seven years ago. Uh, okay. So not that long in, in terms of people who are established authors, but I'm quite prolific. I yeah. sort of write a lot. And you know what it's like with lockdown. I mean, you know, right. uh, what can I do during lockdown? I will write. Yeah. <laughs> so so it, it's been good. Good, good. And did you, were you into writing at all before that, before you went and saw her? Did you do any writing? No, I didn't. Uh, in fact, I mean, I uh, obviously, like all English school kids, I passed my English exam, but not very well, you <laughs> know. And, um, but I've always been, uh, I'm a person, I've got a, the mind of a six-year-old boy, okay? <laughs> That's the best way to look at me. Uh, and if you explain things to me, imagine I'm a six-year-old boy and I'll understand it right away but I've always had this very much of an uh, imaginative mind uh, quite creative so um, I started bringing that into it but th see this is where being an actor can help uh, I'm a method actor um, you know if we think of Meryl Streep or Dustin Hoffman um, they build up these characters to the point where they know what somebody will eat, where they will go on vacation, how many children they would have, what newspapers they like to read. And that's been really helpful for me to build up characters and world building in my books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's important. That's one thing that I teach my students is I think so many people go really generic on their characters. I mean, they'll have a few, um, you know, attributes that are that are kind of um, make them unique, but for the most part, they don't, not like a method actor would, not like knowing everything mm. about them and how they would react in a situation and what their style yeah. is. And I think that just makes the the characters jump off the page so much more. So that's, that's cool that you have a background in that and that actually serves you very well in your writing. Well, it does, but uh, I also like to try and embellish it as well. So I have a great illustrator that I met right at the start of my book writing career. And, uh, so um, I have lots of images in my book that will then build up what I've written down as the description of a character. So then hopefully to the reader, you get a pretty good idea of what somebody looks like. Right, right. 
that's you great. Know, and, uh, and, so, that's, and that's important for me. Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, so you said that you wrote some real life stuff and now you've got fiction. What, what's the split? Do you write more nonfiction or more fiction? Um, I suppose. It's, it's actually a mixture, believe it or not. I, I guess it's a mixture, but, you know, I go where the boat takes me, where the wind's going to be blowing. And uh, I've got this real bee in my bonnet about, I, I woke up one morning in a cold sweat. Um, and that was, I thought, if we don't nurture children now for the love of books and for reading, where will our adult book readers be 20 years time? Right. And I thought, What's happening with that? Now, look, don't get me wrong. I think there's a great place for ebooks. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But, you know, there's a place for having a book to sit around, to read to a child and everything else. So I've got a lot of emphasis now on helping kids. In fact, the last one I've written is called um, A Box Full of Aliens. It's for middle graders. And I invited children from the UK, from Croatia, from Dubai to draw me an alien and to give it a name and tell me what its superpowers are. And I brought those into the book. But not only that, um, uh, for your listeners, I, I don't know if they know what a beta reader is. It's somebody who will uh, read the rough chapter that an author has written and tell me, is it good? Does it start off well? Does it finish well? And so on. Well, I've got beta readers that are children. Mm. I mean, heck, uh, we're doing it for children. Why right. let's get an input back from them. And that, side of it is working really well and um uh, and i i'd like to think that i'm helping children get back into finding the love of a book and for reading it yeah that's that's really cool that you use children as your beta readers that's something i haven't heard too many authors yeah. do but i think that's really insightful well you know what they can give you advice i mean i've forgotten at my age i've forgotten what it was like being a child i guess but uh, <laughs> the children can say little things like i'm describing there's a boy in, in, in this book called Troy. I mean, he's 12, okay? And he's got his little room in the top of this farmhouse. Um, and I had one of the girls as a beta reader, and she said, well, you know, I wouldn't have red on the walls. I think a nice light blue would look better, and it'd be cooler if he had this on his by the side of his bed. And, and so I've taken all that on. So that hopefully when children read it, they say, hey, this this old guy here, he's really in tune with us young kids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So what, tell me about your writing process. How do you go about getting your writing done during the day? Oh, dear. Well, I, when I, when I, uh, I'll tell you um, how I come up with the idea or how I write, first of all. And that is that I'm a, I'm a pantser. And for those listeners that don't know what a pantser is, it's I'm not a traditional author where I'll plan a chapter, plan the story, plan a character. Um, for example, I'm writing a series called The Big Fairy Adventures. And in that, I've got a heroine who's a beautiful fairy. She's overweight and there's nothing wrong with that. She's got a big heart of gold and she's very brave and I love her to bits. She's called Tinker Tanker uh, and she's lovely and comes into this. But I've got a map of the fairy queendom, it's called. And on it, there's 20 little images of all sorts of things. Each one of those images will be a book. What's in the book, I have no idea till I sit down at my laptop and I start typing. Then it all unfolds and it comes out. Now, when I first started doing that, I was really worried. I just thought, what happens if my writing is really bad? I mean, nobody's going to, no matter how, what happens, nobody's going to buy the books. But then I started getting great reviews and I was getting awards. So then I discovered that I'm not the only one in the world who writes like that, which was great to know that there's lots of other people that do it. So that's how I write. Um, what do I do? Do I have a typical day? Um, well, I've got a friend who's married. He's got two children. He's a great author. And he will get up at uh, 8.30 in the morning. He'll have breakfast with the wife and the kids. And then he'll get dressed and he goes to his attic. He's going for a day's work. He'll come downstairs for lunch and then he'll go. Now, I don't do that. I, I write when I feel like it. I will get up. I'll have a coffee. I'll go and do a power walk. I'll do some writing before, then I may do some writing later. Sometimes I'll do nothing in the morning and then I'll write, uh, write till late at night. Um, I think I'm very lucky and I'm being really cautious now, but 
the idea of having a writer's block doesn't bother me in the slightest. I, I just know that as I sit down with my laptop, it'll all come flooding out. So, nice. so that's, that's a sort of a, a typical day for me. Yeah. How many hours a day do you spend working on your writing? Well, I would say um, approximately, I would say between uh, a very approximate, I'll, I'll give you a figure, six hours. Yeah. But it can be less, four, four to six, you know. Yeah. All depends if I'm into something and I'm really enjoying it, uh, which I do, um, I can't stop. I've just got to carry on till I feel I've got a break coming up. Right, right. That's great. That's great. So, um, you know, what are you working on now? What, what, what are your plans for the future? For you have anything you're going to getting ready to release? Uh, well, yeah, you know, I just mentioned a moment ago, uh, the big fairy adventures. Well, mm -hmm. you see, I started writing that right at the start of lockdown in the UK, which was in March last year. OK. And if I look out uh, from my, one of my rooms, which is my man cave, sorry, my author's den, <laughs> if I look out, um, there's a massive grass verge in a big valley and I built a fairy garden. Honestly, it was just a few sparkly pebbles and a little sign saying this is a fairy garden, make a wish. A sort of inspiration for me, but it's a place where lots of children walk up with the parents and they start stopping. So I started building it and building it. So now I've got water features. I've got magic taps. I've got magic lanterns. It lights up at night. And people from all around the area have been to see it. So okay. I thought, keeping on with this idea of getting children involved, I'm writing a little book, which will be free, called My Fairy Garden. Mm -hmm. And I'm inviting children from my... I'm in a very small like village town from there's three schools to draw fairies send them to me and I'm going to put them in the book and then I'm going to give them to the children as a little keepsake right so it's like building it building up this idea of appreciation for kids and I don't care if they come from the poorest background or the richest or they have disabilities it means nothing to me their picture of their fairy will go in this book and then to me, it's a sense of achievement for um, children anywhere be aged between three and ten, you know. Yeah, that's that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So you just plan to keep releasing lots of books for the future? Is there any other projects or are you still acting? Anything else that you're planning to do once uh, well, lockdown is lifted? Um, yeah, well, I've, I've got so many books. And then I thought um, I... You know, as an actor, I decided to go to a studio and I recorded my true life story, uh, which is called Just Five More Minutes. And uh, that went on to win the 2019 uh, Independent Audiobook Awards, uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And last year I won the Saba 2020 Best Narrator Award. So I thought maybe I've got something here. I should start recording it. So I built my own little studio. I mean, you'll laugh if you see it. It's very mm -hmm. basic. It's like I've been to Walmart and I've spent seventy dollars. It's here, but it's really professional, uh, and I'm starting to work my way through my audio books, uh, mm. the books, making them into audio books. But of course, being an actor, I like to put characterizations to the, to the, um, to the voices. So um, it, that side of it is real fun. But I have got another project I want to do. I've never written an out and out sci-fi book. So once I've done this little fairy book, that's what I'm going to do. I, I know what I'm going to write. I've got an idea of where it's going to go. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Nice. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Um, I guess it's you're kind of lucky because so many or so many um, writers are so introverted. But you being an actor, you can actually act out your own books. Well, it's great. I mean, I'd be, to, here's uh, how would you cope with this? But I mean, I've got um, uh, in this middle graders book, the box full of aliens. I've got a little alien called Pangy who lives in the moon, who comes down and he's trying to find out an accent that he can talk to humans with. And the only one he's cottoned on to is, is, is an accent. That he, so he sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you've got this green little alien with funny poppy eyes sounding like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> telling you, you know, um, what he thinks should be done. So 
it's it's, a, it's quite a humorous book. It's a, it's a comedic book, and it's nice to have that fun in there. Hopefully, that some of the children will laugh at. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That sounds like lots of fun. Um, well, thanks so much for talking to us today. It's really fun to hear everything that you're doing, and 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 best of luck with all of that. Do you have any advice last minute for aspiring writers who are still trying to figure it out? Well, yeah, I tell you one bit of advice. You, you know, it, it, it's it's a big learning process, and it has been for me. Uh, right. to think about how to format the book how to write it um and and then get it published and you think hey that's it i can see the light at the end of the tunnel here and i'm almost there but then that little bit of a marketing bit boy is that difficult and um the one big advice i would give to other authors that are getting to that sort of stage is don't put your eggs in one basket mm. and by that i mean i had this massive epic fantasy which i think it's called the one chronicles and i love it to bits and it is a classic and i had a release date did all the planning on it and i uploaded it to amazon for 17 days you couldn't find one of my books wow. then when you could find them for seven days after that they all said unavailable to purchase all amazon said was oh dear we made a mistake we did, were sorry for the inconvenience so now my advice is put it with goodreads kobo draft to digital iBooks just put them out there everywhere then you don't right. get caught out like I did so did it finally get fixed the Amazon problem oh yeah yeah but you know if you as an author you want everything to happen in that first five days right um so you know being wanting had these aspirations to be the best seller that was never going to happen now with that right. so I had to start again and have another relaunch to get it right Mm -hmm. so um but hey you know you don't sweat the small stuff from there i i uh put it behind me and we carry on uh, and i'm doing really well with other things too so that's okay yeah it's one of those things you just gotta um it's the learning experience right and yeah. and yeah. it's what taught you to take your books wide and and you'll probably have a lot more success moving forward now yeah and i try and help people too you know young actors or not sorry that's wrong to say that but uh uh, actors who are new actors you know um right. it's great if you can have somebody to come along and say well look if you do this and do that that will save you making those mistakes mm -hmm. um, and i never do anything i don't get I, I never want anything for it i think to give good valuable advice if you can do it for free is the best for sure for sure and that's what you're doing here on on the podcast yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> great well um where can people find your books and connect with you well, if they go, for example, the best way actually is to go to my website, which is www.thewand.me. And on there, there's a page which shows my classic uh, epic fantasy. But then it says all other books and all my books are there, no matter what genre they are. It gives a little description and there's a link with every book to where it is on Amazon. So people can always get one if they want. Uh, but I'm also, you know, I'm on Facebook, Instagram and um, Pinterest and uh, uh, LinkedIn, you know, uh, mm -hmm. really all of them. But certainly my website is a great place to get to. Great. Well, I will make sure and link all of that in the show notes so that people can find you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us here today and best of luck with all your endeavors. Well, I'll tell you what, it's lovely to meet you. Thanks very much. You and I uh, hope to see you soon. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Michael. He's really fun to talk to, isn't he? Um, I really liked what he said about having kids as beta readers. Like, that's super fun. And, you know, of course, that's probably not going to apply to all of us. If you're writing books geared toward adults, and especially if they have adult content in them, yeah, you probably shouldn't use kids as your beta readers. But I think we can translate that into whatever we do write about, okay? So, for example, if I write detective stories, which I do, maybe I could find somebody on the police force to be a beta reader for me. Or if I don't know anybody, you know, specifically on the police force and they don't want to do it, maybe find someone who has a family member who's on the police force, like a spouse or a sibling or, you know, someone who's very, very familiar with, you know, the way those things work. And you can translate this to anything. You know, if you're writing about a particular market or a particular profession or, 
you know, I would love to say if you're writing about dragons, find a dragon to read for you. And hey, if you can do that, more power to you and, and let me know where you found that dragon. But you, you get the idea. I think we can always translate that into whatever we're, we're writing because our beta readers should not only be there for English purposes like grammar and syntax, they should be there to help us with the story and to, you know, help us capture the ambiance, you know, surrounding something that maybe we as authors aren't as familiar with because we've never actually lived it or actually worked in that profession or, you know, whatever the case may be. I know that Mark Dawson has talked about how he's gotten people who know guns to help him with, you know, the gun side of his stories because his characters generally do use guns and he might not be as familiar as other people are with, you know, different types. So that's the sort of thing we're talking about. So if you do write for children, definitely use children as beta readers. That's super fun. And I also really liked how he talked about the fairy garden, you know, and it's a really good example of thinking outside the box for how to kind of sell your book and create a lot of excitement around it. And once again, that's not going to be, you know, it's not going to work for everybody's book, depending on what your story is. But I would challenge you to think of ways that are just really outside the box thinking for how you could draw attention to your story and get people excited about it like that. Now, because the world is shut down in a lot of areas, we might not be able to do that as much in a physical way as we would like, but we can always create something like that and record it, put it on social media, um, put it in our newsletters, things like that. So just, just do some outside the box thinking and see what you come up with. I would love it if you would go into the Facebook group, the Prolific Author Facebook group, and tell me what you come up with so I can hear your ideas. And uh, finally, I, I really loved what he said about how it is our responsibility to engender the love of reading for children so that the next generation loves to read as much as we do. I have a niece and nephew that I tried to read to, and <laughs> it's really funny because there's just different personalities going on there. My nephew, let's put it this way, he's probably never going to be an author. He's a really bright kid, but he actually struggles with reading because his he's got a very analytical mind, and his forte is more in math and shapes, and he'll probably end up doing something with his hands for a profession, which is great. Um, but he just doesn't really have the mind for reading and writing. So he does let me read to him, but he gets bored after about 20 minutes. He never, you know, sits still very long. Then his younger sister, Journey, is much more like me. I mean, if either of them is going to be an author, it will be her. And I'm not saying that she will be, just she has more of the personality and the mind for it. So I can read to her for much longer, especially if I'm reading books about princesses and magic and unicorns. They are her favorite. <laughs> but the point is, we do need to engender reading in the next generation. And I do think that that is part of our duty as authors to make sure that they, you know, our children and the you know, up and coming generations love stories as much as we do because we learn from them because they help our psyche so much. We as human beings need stories so desperately. And as I've talked about before in the podcast, it's been proven now that people who read fiction actually have more empathy and more compassion than people who don't. So it's a good thing to get them hooked on these stories in a good way. It helps with their psychological health. So I just really loved that whole conversation. And I think uh, Michael's kind of a genius when it comes to that. And I just hope you guys all found some, um, some value in this interview and enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed talking to Michael. All right. So I think that's pretty much it for me today. Good luck with Nano, anybody who's doing it. Since I probably, I, I will put a podcast out next week. Oh, I, I hope I get it out before Thanksgiving, but if not, happy Thanksgiving to you. And uh, after that, the Christmas season's really going to be in full swing. So good luck to us all and uh, try to keep your writing at the forefront, but whatever you do, just have tons and tons of fun with it, okay? Go forth and write amazing stories, and remember, there is always a market for awesome. Me again. Before you go, if you found value in this episode, I would love it if you could leave me a review. Reviews are the best way to show your appreciation and help others find this podcast. Be sure to screenshot it, share it on your favorite social media network, and tag me at LK Hill Books. Remember, the world needs your stories. Only you can change someone's heart with your fire-breathing dragons, your mind-blowing mysteries, your epic romances, and your intense thrillers. So join the revolution and be a prolific author.